what's good with it everyone welcome back to my channel today we're gonna be covering javascript from zero to hero pretty much everything that you need to know um, before moving on to coding with javascript frameworks and such um, this is what i think people need to know um, for the bare bones and even more to get started um, making applications making servers or doing anything related to the javascript framework so uh, without further ado let's move on so a few prerequisites for following along is um, you need vs code for sure that's that's what we'll be using to um, to to help us um, write some javascript and also in vs code marketplace we'll also need a um, live server um, this is just going to allow us to um, hot reload our JavaScript onto the on through the Chrome browser to see our see our output. Um, so, that, so this is our agenda for today. What we're trying to cover, what I'm trying to um, teach you guys. Um, so we're going, to, we're going to be covering stuff from like data types to declaration of different um, var, let, and const, scoping for while switch case. Um, higher, higher order functions, function closures, set timeout intervals, callback functions, async, and then to something more, um, more, more advanced, which is async await promises and web workers. Um, so we got a lot of stuff to cover. So let's jump right in. So over here, we have a fresh project on VS Code. I just created a JavaScript um, little directory over here. So we're going to need a couple files. We're going to need an index.html file over here. And then over here, we're just going to add a doc type tag, some HTML, um, over here a head tag. And um, inside this head tag, we got to add a script tag. Um, same opening and closing and we're going to add a source of main um, dot js so we're going to save that right here create a new file called main dot js and over here is where we will be doing all our javascript so javascript zero to hero so let's save that um, save that also right here and once if you have live server installed already um, so you just got to go here search live server and um, click this and this is the one you got to download so you if you don't have it downloaded you'll have like the install button here um, but yeah pretty much all you after you're done that you can right click and and uh, open and click this button called open with live server so this is what should open up when you when you click that button. Uh, if you go to inspect and console, you do see our 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 console log that we just did. Let me just move this to a side and let's code side by side with it. Um, I'm gonna increase it a little bit. Uh, might be it might might be a tight squeeze, but I think we can get it done. So we, we don't have any we don't need to do anything in this file. So we can close this up over here, and all our coding will be done over over here um, so let's get started off with data types now um, JavaScript has a few data types they have a string so let's make a string data type over here like nothing is strongly typed in JavaScript so you can pretty much just keep on writing var with your variable number with, with, with sorry with your variable name and then the value of that variable um, and then so I made a um, type of string a type of number I'm going to make an object which pretty much starts with an open and closing curly brackets and here you'll put the name of the key inside the object um, and the value in, in quotation marks and then there's also type array and pretty much you can just write one, two, three. You can even write, um, put in strings and just mix all this up. So JavaScript is a very like loosely typed language. So it doesn't really matter. Um, there, there, there's something um, called a date, which is used often. Um, you declare it like this. And, it, and when you run the JavaScript, it pulls the actual time when, um, when you run the, the JavaScript. And finally, there is a Boolean, which is either true or false. Um, let me open this up over here because we don't have so I'm trying to open inspect panel 
Okay, that works. I just had to move the the window over a little bit for some reason it's not showing. So yeah, if we go here and now let's um this is all well and good. Like I can tell you that these are actual types, but let's actually um pretty much just ask JavaScript what their types are. So we'll go data type of um and then we'll do curly brackets and then we will copy this line because all of this is repetitive so one two three four five six so data type of the the str data type of num um data type of object um data type of array um data type of date and um, data type of bool. So something interesting that you'll notice here is that I think everyone's expecting each to have its own type, but there's actually some that's gonna be um, repeating, but that's just the way JavaScript was built. And we'll see that very shortly. So this is array, um, this is date, and this is bool. Okay, save that. And here we go. If you um, look over to the, the left, okay, great. I can zoom in. Um, the, the data type of the, the string value string, that's great. Um, um, number is, is num. Actually, no, I, I, I did this wrong. So it's, I got to put a type off over here and the name over here. So save that. And there you go. So str is string, num is number, ob is object, array is object. That That's weird. That's just the way um, um, JavaScript's built. It's, ar arrays are actually um, of type object, but it's a, it just contains its own um, special functions and stuff attached to it that we'll see later. Date is a type object, which is in no surprise there there is no such thing as date um, type. But you, but from the outside, it just acts like a date type, like so it's very seamless. Um, bool and bool is, is is boolean. Um, so we got that out out of the way. Um, that's basic data types that you gotta that you gotta know to get started with. And we notice, uh, and if you notice, we all started with um, declaring it with var. But now let's let's move on, and I'll show you um, the other ways. So there's var, right? So it's my first variable over here. So you can declare it like that, or you can declare it like this over here with let. And also there's one more const, which is the third one. And and we probably like, okay, well, what's the difference between all of them? Um, var is very, it's a very um, old, like pre, I'm not sure, like I think before 2010, um, var was the only thing available, but it wasn't well, um, it wasn't, it wasn't well structured. Like it doesn't follow um, the rules of programming as you would expect, as we'll see soon. Um, so, uh, and then this, this gets pointed out later um, when we do scoping, but pretty much constant, you can change the value. Um, let, you can change the value and var, you can change the value, but it has, but it breaks so many rules of scoping. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So this is a scope over here, your open bracket, your closing bracket. This is considered a scope. What's inside here is considered a scope. So now let's move these variables in here. Okay, now let's let's also declare this with some type of data in it. So I'll just put string. I'll just I'll just repeat this because it doesn't really matter. Um, cons do that again, and third do that again. And if I go here down console log first, I save that. Okay, that's fine. It's printing out um, string right but that's not how um it should work because this is declared in its own scope so when it reaches outside of this var shouldn't be available but it is it's just the way javascript was created but um, they introduced let and cons and actually let follows um that practice so if we do if we do some second and we save you see it's on um, second it's not defined so it's actually following the rules and the same with third you save that and third is not found too. So these two, I would highly recommend moving forward, you always use let and const, never use var. You will get laughed at in whatever company. Don't even, in a coding interview, don't even use var. Like it's, people will just get iffy about it. Just never use var. Var should be, like there might be an instance where you need var because it, you need the, you, you need specifically for this case that it breaks the rules of, of scoping and stuff. But that's just a very rare case. Like let and cons should suffice for it. Okay, that's, that's scoping in a nutshell. Um, 
so let's just i just want to show you the, the 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 difference between all of these so um const as you know you should not be able to change it but first um you can change it to whatever second you can change it to whatever and if you save that like nothing breaks over here but as soon as you go to third and you try to do any fancy magic you save that and it says assignment to constant variable is not allowed Ooh, yeah so so that's good that that's that's what constant variables are supposed to do um over here so let me um comment that out but one thing weird about const is that it doesn't really um, apply for objects um, and you might figure that out on your own or um, you might come across it but I'll, I'll just state it right here so object here um, so it's cool so you can change it that's fine so I can go here and assign another one with the last name with some uh, blah 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 so, oops some blah 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 here um, so I can't do this that's fine but for some reason I can go here and do object dot name equals um, Brad <laughs> that's the first name that came to my head and if I console log ob object save that and you see that it's changed to Brad but you're probably like how is this possible um, like we declared this as a constant but actually we freeze the we we make the reference to the object variable um, constant so this whole entire thing cannot be reassigned but you can reassign values inside it and now you're probably like well I need this probably a, a requirement for a use case that I need to freeze all that stuff inside um, and yeah there is, there is a JavaScript um, um, function that allows you to do it so all you gotta do is object dot freeze and then you pass your object within your that you want to freeze and if you save that you notice that this time it's it stays back to the sass that sass <laughs> it doesn't change to brad and that's what object.freeze does and if you and if you remember from um, about a couple minutes ago um, arrays of type um, object so you can this applies to arrays too so if you had an array over here and you try to change it it would change but if you really wanted to make it a true constant with all its variables inside constant too you would have to do object dot freeze and that's a that's another key quirk of um of of javascript so that that's cool so we got through that now we we understand like variable declare declaration scoping constants all that good stuff now let's move on to something more valuable and something that you'll use more often in in coding which is um for loops so let's declare an array right here and let's just do one um two three four and five okay this is our array we'll be pl playing with and for loop is pretty simple so all you you're just iterating through each element inside this array so you start with four let because you never use var <laughs> and you need something that's reassignable so you started as at index zero and you say hey i don't want it to pass um a specific number so like this this length so if you go array dot length we won't go out of bounds of this array variable here and then we just gotta increment the the iteration value over here and then we open a um a, a, we open a scope and inside here we can console actually let's um let, let's create a sum variable so let's sum equals zero and then we'll do sum is equal to sum plus array at index i um, I did something here close that um, const cool so we save that and then we console log sum and we save that we see that that's how you iterate so it iterates over each element and adds it to the sum and it keeps track of the accumulated value and then prints it out over here um, so a shortcut that you can also do is um, this uh, writing this is the same as writing uh, this so if we do that and save it and we see on the left we get the same value so that's a little shortcut that that you can do um, with, the, with 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 uh, with adding stuff so now let's go on 
to um, while loops, which is the same thing. So we're trying to do the same thing, but with a while loop iteration. Um, it's not as common, but there's definitely use cases for it. Um, let, let me close this. I don't think I'm going to use this. Yeah. Okay. So here, while um, while i is less than the number, we're pretty much going to do the same thing again, where it we're trying to accumulate the value at that specific index. But i is not like i is not getting added here. So what we got to do at the very bottom is just increment the value over here, and then if we do cons the log, and then the sum is uh, is and then I put the sum over here save that um, so I is not declared here I just forgot to declare I so um, initially in the for loop the I was getting declared inside the for loop but for the while you got to remember to declare it so and sum is also not declared I forgot to do that I save that and there we go the sum is 15 over there so you can do a lot of amazing things with iterations and it's um and it's and it's very very um often used so um don't ever forget it like it's 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 very valuable okay let me comment this and we're going to move on to um key, um to to switch statements so comment that um comment that Okay, so, so this is how you do a switch statement. Let, let's say we have a variable and it's like key equals to five um, and you wanna check and you wanna like do some specific operations based on um, the past in key or with the, the value of a specific um, variable. So you put that variable within the switch statement, you open a scope and you say, okay, for case where it's two, um, I want to do some specific logic. So let's just do console log. Um, this is two, and let's open another case, case where it is four, console log, this, this is four, and then finally case five, um, console log uh, this is five and then um, let's save that and there we go if you see on the right this is five so if we change that um, to like any of the stuff in between it will it will update but another gotcha is that you need to remember to make sure to use break so what's happening here is as soon as it finds one it's just gonna slip through all the cracks over here so um, we, if we use break and we save that, then it actually um, represents what we're trying to do. So change that to four, save that. And what if we have like, I don't know, seven, which is not in bounds, like nothing gets executed over here. But if you wanted a default um, scenario to happen, you would, there is something that you can do. You can declare a default here and you can say console log, this is a default catch save that and there you go you see that um, it's printing out that this is a default catch so you can do a lot of amazing things again with this um, I find this really useful a lot so this is how you do like switch statements um, moving on to some other um, neat stuff of, Java, of JavaScript which is used pretty often is the math functions over here so I'm gonna quickly go over this um, this is probably taught in school too like rounding decimal places um, um, doing square root functions on it and stuff like that so if you want to round a number in JavaScript you would have to use math.round function and pass the number inside um, so let's just do two, I mean three ones, where we do 4.3. I think everyone knows where that's gonna go. And then, you know, this is kind of iffy where it's like right in between. And if we save that, we see, hey, that's how it works. So if it reaches five, then it gets rounded up to the next decimal place. And then if it's below five, then it gets rounded down. Um, but there's other stuff that you can do. So if you wanna force a round either down or up, there's also functions for, for that. So let's say 4.7, you wanna, you have this specific use case where you wanna round down. So all you gotta use is the seal function over here. The same thing applies for if you wanna round up from a small one, you can just do, um, 
you can just do oops I did that the wrong way so this is actually floor to bring it down and this one is actually seal and then let me comment this save that and then you notice that hey 4.7 at uh, this time just got rounded down to 4 and 4.3 got rounded up when um, round would do the opposite so those are a few uh, math functions over there there's a bunch like power and square root um, you can take a look into that it's very useful um, I just won't cover it because um, um, that, that, that's just something you should look up on your own if you wanted to um, just, just just learn more um, now we're gonna go to something really useful oh my god this is like this is like uh, this should be illegal this is a hack to be honest um, so um, JavaScript has this neat thing called higher order functions and it's pretty much all these little helper functions um, that are attached to arrays that just make your life so much easier um, Phil and then uh, Jacob I guess I'm not affiliated with any of these people okay so let's say you wanna we wanna modify this array just iterate through it usually we'd have to go up here make this for loop and then change each of its uh, indexes in the array but what um, JavaScript allows is it these handy little functions that you can do that as, as well so you can do const new array and all you gotta do is array dot map pretty much maps over the value and then x represents each array each index in the array and then arrow function and then all you gotta do is return what you want that index to be so I just want to increase them all by one so I'll just return x plus one over here and then I will console log new array so if I save that, we see they all got incremented by one. Um, so uh, this this might look funny to you, but this is just another shorter way of defining a JavaScript function over here. You can even do function, do that, and then this is how you declare the function another way. Um, so yeah, there's two ways. There's declare function, functions like this or declaring functions like arrow functions over here. Um, I just prefer arrow functions. They just look so much more cleaner and they're just like the standard to follow as you um, in the current JavaScript community. It's, it's, it's just much more, um, much more, a much more respected way of doing it to say the least. Um, okay, so there's we got we gotten over the map, but there's so many. There's a filter function, and this is pretty cool. You can just say, hey, I want like specific, um, uh, specific elements in 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 like an array or an object that meet a criteria. So here I want everything that's greater than two, and then if I save that, it just returns to me all the elements that are greater than two. And again, like you can change that to three. And then you see it just returns all the values greater than three. Um, there's another one. I'm just going to show you the ones that are really useful. I think there's like a kajillion others more. And that's just stuff that you would have to research into. Um, so there's also um, reduce, which actually does an aggregate of all the values here. But in this case, we actually need to pass more than one value in this function here. So the way to do that is we can't just add another value over here. It just won't, won't work. So um, what happens is for more than one value, you got to enclose it within um, curly brackets over here. And this actually represents the accumulation um, variable. And this is actually the current um, variable. And all you're going to do here is do the accumulate variable. And you're going to add it with the current. Um, and then you're just going to return the accumulated value over here. And if you save that, we get the sum of all these over here. And if we just change this to this, like you'll notice something really funny too. It adds all your <laughs> names together, um, which is which is pretty cool. And you'll find it really useful the more you do some some JavaScript. 
um, here's another one that's really nice you can do find so I'll, I'll switch to using this ar array now and I want to find every I, I, I want to find if there's a John in here so I can just go here and I can say return where um, X is equal to John and also we got to go back because now we're using um, one variable so we can do x save that and then it does a return shot let's say we have a different name that that's not here like um i don't know fill with the <laughs> with an f f h i l we save that and we get an undefined variable back um another neat thing which will come in handy is like people usually try to well not usually like a people like to like it's making sorting algorithms are completely useless these days. Like there's so many other stuff that's just built in that you can use y uh, yourself. So let's mix this up now. So let's bring two here, one here, this is five, and this is three. Now all of this is not in order over here, but um, JavaScript high order functions has this neat little sort capability. So again, this has um, two values, your first and your last. I mean, sorry, your first and the second one after that. And all you got to do to to filter for ar array is you got to see if the first is greater than the second. And if it is, then return true. Return true. But it's also one. One um, translates to true. And um, if it's not, so if um, x is less than, if the first uh, variable is less than um, the second, then return from false, which is negative one. And you gotta return for a case where they're the same to, co to catch those two. And for that, you gotta return um, zero over here. Let me change that back to this. And there we go, it sorts in ascending order over here. If you wanna change the order around, all you gotta do is flip, flip, flip the um, return variables. So when it's greater than one, you wanna return false because you wanna swap their place. And then the same thing with here, you you want to keep, you actually want to keep um, this place, so you keep it to one. And you save that, and then it um, sorts in um, in descending order. And there's nothing special about all of this. You can actually make a sort function here, and you can do this the old school way of making a function, but I highly recommend everyone to do it the ES6 way. So we declare a constant variable, and say, hey, that constant variable is equal to a function. And the way you declare a function is by putting these um, these um, curly brackets, sorry, not these curly brackets, these rounded brackets, and you put an arrow with opening and curly um, brackets here, and this declares a function. And this function, this sort function will take, again, the same x, y, and then you can um, put this here, and this needs to de be declared up over here because it doesn't exist. And then we can just replace this with our sort, sort function here. We pass it in, and if we save that, see, we notice the same thing. Um, it's working as intended. And if we switch around, it gets ascended into, it gets sorted into ascending um, order. Um, yeah, so I don't wanna make this video too long, I'm gonna break this off into a second part where I finish the rest from JavaScript Zero to Hero. If you did like this video, please leave a like, smash the subscribe button, and see you in the next video.